Okay, so what we were looking at was the closed graph theorem, this particularly useful formulation of the open mapping theorem and the Banach isomorphism theorem, which somehow incorporates everything in it. And this is the one that's actually used most often when you want to prove that maps are definitely continuous, when you're not sure and you want to call up on some theorem to prove that some linear map must be continuous, this is the one you usually call on. In fact, this is the one that makes it incredibly hard for linear maps between Banach spaces to be discontinuous because almost every specifically defined linear map you find from a Banach space to another Banach space, and I mean a linear map genuinely defined on the whole of your Banach space, not on some dense subset, uh, you almost always find that there's some reason it has to have closed graph. And then that forces it to be continuous. And this is not actually too much of a surprise because to, to get a genuine discontinuous linear map between uh, Banach spaces, you actually need to use something like the axiom of choice to show that there are any. It's much easier to find discontinuous linear maps between norm spaces. But to find a discontinuous linear map from a Banach space into a norm space, is that you'll never find one that's, you'll never come across one in reality other than those sort of that exist using the axiom of choice. We've got one new handout today, um, the handout on community Banach algebras. And I was just saying that the G14 TAN assess coursework, um, I have the sheet ready, but it's going, I have to get it moderated to make sure it's okay. I'll be handing it out next week. Uh, and while you're all here, let me just mention that the rubric for the exam for G14 TAN is going to be the same rubric. So it's the same system as for G14 FUN. So it's um, a three-hour exam, um, five questions, best four count, full marks for four perfect answers, um, no calculators in this exam. But then who needs a calculator for functional analysis? Right, so, uh, right, where were we? Yes, yeah, so open mapping theorem, particularly useful. So we were looking at, first of all, you've got a couple of norm spaces and then you can form their direct sum, x plus y, which of course is then another no a norm space as well with this norm we put on it by adding the norms. And I said, and that gives you the product topology. And uh, a bit later on, I note that if x and y are Banach spaces, then that makes x plus y, the direct sum, is also a Banach space with this norm. So if x and y complete, implies that x plus y is also complete with norm 1. So this shows you how to take a direct sum of Banach spaces and get another Banach space. Then we looked at the graph of a linear map. And we defined it just as a subset of the direct sum. It is, of course, a vector subspace. of the direct sum. That's because t is linear. So if you add the x values, you will also add the tx values. And if you multiply the x value by a constant, you'll also multiply the tx value by a constant. And so uh, it does work as a linear subspace as well. Moreover, it's isomorphic to x uh, the, in the vector space sense because uh, I mentioned before that the map x goes to tx, x goes to x, tx is actually a linear isomorphism from x to the graph of t. And the inverse is given by the projection. I'll, I'll come back and mention that again in a moment. Okay, and so closed graph means that you should be 
closed in the product topology or, <coughs> or with respect to this norm one and so on. And then if X and Y are Banach spaces, um, then X plus Y is a Banach space. And then a, if you've got closed graph, then the graph becomes a Banach space as well using the, uh, because it's a closed subspace of the, uh, a closed vector subspace of the direct sum. Let me jump to this, uh, the fact that if T is continuous and T is closed graph is a nice easy exercise that you should have a go at. Um, and that does one direction of the closed graph theorem. That's, this is the easy direction of the closed graph theorem and it's valid for maps between norm spaces. Okay, so this is valid whether or not X and Y are complete. But the converse, you need X and Y to be Banach spaces. And in those circumstances, the converse holds. And that if you've got closed graph, then T is a continuous linear map. It is, of course, this T is linear, don't forget, uh, for the converse. You don't need, uh, uh, you get closed graph anyway, even if T isn't linear, for any continuous map between metric or, or even topological spaces. So, uh, so you, you get closed graph for free. So as I said a moment ago, and it's an easy exercise, that if uh, X and Y are Banach spaces, then X plus Y is a Banach space with uh, is norm 1. The graph is a linear subspace, and so if it's closed, then it's going to be a Banach space. So theorem 5.13 is a closed graph theorem. You've got Banach spaces, you've got a linear map from X to Y, then T is continuous if and only if T is closed graph. And... Uh, Let's, that's a, a left-right arrow, if and only if is, uh, implies and is implied by, um, well, in the other order. Um, so, proof of this, the forward implication is, this is the exercise mentioned earlier. that uh, T continuous implies T has closed graph. So that's the easy direction. And that doesn't need completeness. So that brings us on to the reverse implication, which is what we were starting to talk about last time. So we drew this picture last time, just to show us what was going on. We've got our linear map from x to y, and you've got the graph of t living in x cross y, graph of t let me just say what we're given. We're given, remember, x and y are complete. So x plus y with norm 1 is a Banach space. And then graph of t is closed. And we're given graph of t is closed, that makes that a Banach space as well. Now we've got our standard coordinate projections, Px and Py. And Px restricted to the graph of t is actually a linear isomorphism between graph of t and x. We have 
that x and graph of t are isomorphic in the vector space sense to start with using um, S from X to graph of T defined by S of X equals X T of X which will get you to everything in the graph once for each element because the graph has only got one for each element of X, that's how the graph is defined. Um, the inverse map s to the minus 1 from graph t to x is just px restricted to graph t, the, the usual coordinate projection. So that takes x, tx, goes to x. But px is continuous, so this is continuous. But Px is continuous, so Px restricted to graph T is a continuous linear isomorphism between the Banach spaces Continuously in the isomorphism of Banach spaces from graph T goes to X. Now, by the Banach isomorphism theorem, the inverse must be continuous as well. Um, the inverse of this map is also continuous and the inverse of that map is what is the inverse of the map Px restricted to the graph of T? I've got a couple of maps mentioned up here, which are both isomorphisms, one in each direction. The coordinate projection we get to be continuous of three. We restrict it to the graph of T, it becomes a continuous linear isomorphism. The inverse of that continuous linear isomorphism will be a map from X to the graph of T. Which map is it? Yes, it's just S. So this is just saying S is continuous from X to graph T. And finally, T is actually equal to Py composed with S. Because look, T of X is equal to um, Py of X, T of X. The, the projection onto the second coordinate, gosh, have I got the right number of brackets there? One, two, three, one, two. Yes, amazing. <laughs> That's a lot of brackets. Okay. Um, some of those brackets could be eliminated. So we know the map taking x to x, tx is continuous. 
which is S. And uh, then you project onto the second coordinate and you get T. So since PY is continuous, T is continuous. Let me finish. Where did we use the fact that there were banner spaces? It's hidden again in a quote of a theorem. So where did we quote a theorem? Can anyone see where we quoted the theorem? The Banach isomorphism theorem, right? The Banach isomorphism theorem is a theorem about banner spaces. Um, it says that if you have a, a continuous linear isomorphism between banner spaces, then the inverse must be continuous. Uh, so that's where we use the fact that they were banner spaces. And that's where it all goes wrong otherwise. Okay? But we were okay because the graph of T was assumed to be closed. That made it a banner space. And X was a banner space. So that's why we were allowed to apply the banner isomorphism theorem. And that gave us... The, f the map we knew was continuous was S to the minus 1, which was the, pro was the projection. The map we wanted to be continuous was S so that we could get t out of it. So we use the fact that we know that s to the minus 1 is continuous to prove that s is continuous using the Banach isomorphism theorem. And once you've got s, you get t because it's just one of the coordinates of the things from s. So you're OK. OK, you might want to have another look at that. Um, any questions about anything from section 5? The open mapping stuff or anything? We we will also have an optional revision session after Easter, so you can always prepare some questions for that. Okay, that brings us to the end of uh, section five, um, or chapter five, whatever it is. Um, we've got chapter six to go, and then the commutative Banach algebra stuff, and also one <coughs> class next week when we discuss the measure theory material. So we'll stop there for this recording.